Hi guys, welcome to Secret Confessions. I'm Hans Valentino. I'm a filmmaker and company studio in Spiro. We make social impact films. And since it's still quarantine in our beloved city, um, the past week we launched the Secret Confessions. It's a Facebook live show where we interview key people and we ask them their top three secrets and how it really transformed their lives. And so let's get started and roll intro. So our guest for today is a serial entrepreneur and he is a consultant to quite a lot of establishments here in our city. And he's no other than Enrique San Juan. And Enrique is gonna share to us his top three secrets. First, he's gonna tell us where he sleeps, which is quite radical and which is really um, strange for a lot of people. But it really has a lot to say about the principles he lived for in life. Second, he's gonna tell us about his experiences with food and how his taste buds can actually say whether your cuisine or your food would actually succeed or not as a business. And he's also gonna share to us how to make a food stand out in a quite a noisy market. So check out on that. And finally, he will be sharing to us how he started his entrepreneurial journey by selling something quite naughty and illegal. And he's gonna share to us wisdom bombs and one of the very important principles one should know when you start a business. So check it out. So Enrique, tell us about your secret number one. I sleep and I've been sleeping on a yoga mat for uh, give or take that 10 years, 11 years. Uh, there's a very good principle also behind it. It gives you a very good posture. It's also very good for your back and so forth. So it kind of also relates to providing you proper rest and it clears your mind. And apart from that, I think it's also very humbling because then when you sleep, you know, you rest, you really detach yourself from everybody. You go back to yourself. And you start, to, it's also a very good way to establish the fact that you don't really need a lot. So what can you um, advise to people who want to just even consider minimalism? So you start with like asking a question that goes like, do I really, 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 really need this? You know, when you go shopping, when you go browsing on the internet, when you feel like having something because someone you know has it, you just ask that question. And if you don't, then you don't care. And you can also start with clearing things. So you can consider donating. So that's what I did. Over the time, you really build a habit. So to start, it's uh, giving away, clearing space, and keeping that uh, minimal amount of things that you really need. Look, and when you look at it at a different perspective, minimalism is not just really about money. You know, I mean, you could save a lot, yeah. but it's not just about money. It's it's more than money. It's the value. It's the principle. Number one, it's very light to the feeling, yeah. to everything, and to your mind because you only just you know there's so much clutter behind it. Everything is you know just stuck to what's important, so what's essential. We have lesser things, you know physical things around the house. We also have don't, don't have much that baggage internally. Yes. The other, side of thing, the other side of things, you also allow to create space for the things that really truly value. So you might have been chasing for the wrong things all this time. You might have been stuck in a debt race because you wanted to acquire things that didn't really truly matter to your core. So if you do away with that, you're actually opening yourself with more important things to you. And even if you acquire these things, but these are also things that really hold true value in you. So there's no clutter happening. And before I proceed, I want to say thank you so much for being with us today in the show. It really means a lot. Um, your presence really means a lot. So please um, subscribe, comment, and tell us what you think. And I really hope that we enjoy and grow together in this channel. We move on to our second secret. Um, I have a very good experience or big experience around food. So if I try something that's really good and I know that it will work in the market, I would only do like one big test. 
if that food will make me cry, then that's it. It's it's gonna work, you know. Can you tell us like one food that you you really cried? So these were like some tangtai or Chinese dumplings. So oh my God. I was visiting this place for another stretch of five years, and I've seen how her place grew from what would be a one meter by one meter square stall. <laughs> I'm going back into the space and time. So I had it and I, I was just like, oh my God, this is so good. It's like tears were coming out of my eyes. And wow. They got real big, you know, they got very popular in the place. Yeah. I was, I was an avid fan through and through. So your taste buds could actually verify the success of a food business? <laughs> Correct, yeah. And I get paid for that, you know. People people ask me to review a food. And it's part of my it's part of what I do. Wow. In business development for F and B. Yeah. What's in a food for you to be to be really like engaged in it? For me, it always goes from the eyes, the nose, and then like, the taste. Especially with like higher scents, you know, eighty percent of what you taste is really come from your smelling. Nose. And. The, the interesting thing about um, when you get to smell something, it, it brings you back to a different time and space. So there's a lot of emotional uh, triggers when you're having food. You might like something that other people might not like, and there are other things that's pretty universal. I weigh in more what is authentic, but then also identify potentials if this can also be something that's universal because uh, the business side of things, you would want the food to work. This is a very good tip to all our um, friends and starting out with um, quarantine food businesses. So that's a good yeah. tip to exp- I mean, to consider, you know, to make sure that your product has all that aspects. Okay, so let's move on to the last secret. Growing up, I was always that kid who would sell anything in school. Interestingly, I made a lot of money from selling corn, printed material, and I also sold condoms. I went to an all-boys school, so it was very good business. Wow. <laughs> but that really just, you know, it was the it was the dot, the period to the sentence that here's the guy to buy him if you want something. Okay, just a random question. Would you know before how much you do, I mean, like, earn in a day just selling those stuff i remember like i i would sell it like a full bond paper was i think 200 pesos it was short-lived you know i felt bad after doing that because you just start to realize that just because you make money you do it anyway yeah yeah so i kind of like i cut it short maybe it ran for like a good three weeks and i was like Done. i didn't do it anymore. <laughs> So I could say that at, at an early age, you're, you really had that entrepreneurial sense. You know, it, entrepreneurship is like a exercise for creativity, right? And it's just um, refreshing, no, to to be reminded, bana, that um, ability to be entrepreneurial really starts when you're young. It's your like um, message or your advice, but to especially to the young ones who are, you know, to just consider entrepreneurship. The best thing to do is really try something that you have fun doing. Something that excites you and something that gets your energy working. The financial aspect of doing a business should just be one of the few impacts that you would want to come back. Explore things that uh, align with your personal values. Is it something that can help other people? Is it something that can offer assistance to a lot of other businessmen also? You move around in the space where you're able to provide service and help to others then you're, you're just good to go. Yeah. It's never always about having the money to start a business. You know, your skill sets, your creativity, you can leverage on that. Just as long as you make sure that uh, uh, your ideas are also something you can monetize upon, meaning it has value to other people. I think those two things can really get to go. If you have those two, then you're, you're pretty set. I mean, I so agree to that. I mean, to everything you said. Like number one about money, um, I really believe in businesses that mon- money is the should be the byproduct. Like it's not the it's a, it's the byproduct of the business. You know? you know, just really start from from scratch and then be able to grow with it. It's it's very what what you said is really um, important. It's a very good reminder. 
about proposals as well. Um, most of my clients would get us. It's because of our proposals. That's not that's my see super secret. It all starts with the with the proposals, you know. And it's something I didn't learn in school. I was a psychology graduate, and I learned it by mistake. And I learned it by just being just being authentic, you know, on on giving what the client needs. And then yeah. And there it is. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot. I really learned a lot in our full conversation. Um, and if you want to check the live, it's, it's every Wednesday at 8 p.m. in Philippine time. So I'm going to check. Just click the link here. And I uh, want to see you there in our Facebook lives every Wednesday at 8 p.m. So guys, thank you so much for um, being here, being present, and please tell us what you think. If you've learned a lot, if you want to try sleeping on a yoga mat, comment below. If you cry over food, tell us what food that was. You know, comment below. And if you want to go and venture business, you might let's share ideas, engage, and let's comment below. Once again, thank you so much. This, this has been Hans Florentino, and we want to see you on the next episode of Secret Confessions.